Hi, Stephen from Own It Disown, and I got a very exciting object here to test out for you. I've been waiting for one for one of these for ages. It is the Aorus Gaming Box. Now you may have heard of the one with the GTX 1070 in it. I'm not messing around with that. I'm upping it to the 1080. It's about $700. I'll put some links in the description below on, uh, on where you can buy it from. Now it uh, does look pretty awesome device. Of course, it uses a Thunderbolt 3 connection to uh, get that uh, 40 gigabits per second uh, uh, bandwidth. Um, now, looking at it, connection-wise, it's got uh, three uh, uh, display ports, an HDMI and a dual link uh, DVI port. It also has uh, four uh, USB 3 ports, and one of them supports um, quick charge 3, so that's uh, four times faster than, uh, than regular charging. Now, I'm not sure if the, uh, the 1080 is actually, it's, uh, I think it's embedded in here, so I don't think you can take it out, but we'll, we'll you know, we'll have a look. But I think it's pretty embedded to stir up, stop you from selling it or doing whatever. But um, So we'll check that out. And I'm going to test it out on three different notebooks. Um, as a baseline, I'm going to test it out on this beast here, the, the Sager NP9873. Now, that's got a 1080 in it already and a desktop i7-7700K CPU. So, I'll, you know, that'll be the baseline. So I'll test it with that 1080 in here, and I'll also use the, uh, the Thunderbolt 3 port to, to route it to this and see if we get any difference. Um, I'll then step it down to the, uh, the Yoga 720 15 inch. Now this has a Thunderbolt 3 port in it, which uh, has only two PCI Express lanes, uh, not the four. So it will be interesting to see what performance you get on this. Uh, this has the i7-7700 uh, HQ CPU. Um, so uh, that'd be good to see what type of, um, you know, hit, performance hit we take with that. And then finally, we've got the very small and diminutive tablet. It's not many tablets with a, a Thunderbolt uh, 3 port these days. This is the ASUS Transformer Book um, T303UA. And it uh, only has integrated uh, HD520 uh, graphics in it. And uh, it's, uh, it's got an ultra portable 6th uh, gen CPU. So nothing hardcore in this. So what type of impact will, uh, will I get with this? So there are three I'll be testing. I'll do, I'll do 1080p games, and I'll also be doing it uh, 2560 by 1440 as well. So uh, let's see what is in the box here. Oh, nice. Comes in a nice carrying case, though. So you can carry it around with you to, um, if you want to go to a, perhaps a party or something like that. So it comes with a power cable. It comes with the, uh, the Thunderbolt port cable. You need that for sure. And of course, a carrying strap for your shoulder. You know, it's a lot smaller than I first I thought it was going to be. I did, I thought it was going to be huge. So inside here we get um, an insulation guide and uh, probably the drivers on a CD. And inside the bag, it's, you know, it's nicely padded with a couple of pockets. Got a little pocket here on the side. So that's okay too. It's a bit like a camera bag, isn't it? And there it is. And that is pretty compact, I must say. Now you can see there, I'm sure the camera picks it up here, a nice big fan over over the heat sinks. You know, it looks like a I don't know, 120 millimeter fan, I think, yeah. So it looks pretty good. And uh, must be a custom card in there. So it's very, very nice. Weight wise, you know what? We're gonna have to weigh this just to see what it is. There's the FireWire port. Now, the, not the Fire, the, the Thunderbolt 3 port, which can of course uh, deliver charge up to about 100 watts to uh, perhaps a notebook such, such as this is Asus here, yeah. So it could power that at the same time. So that's pretty nice. And around the, the front is pretty bare, nothing there. In fact, I don't even see a power button. So it must charge up, start on automatically. All right, so in fact, let's just go and see how much it weighs. Yep, 5.4 pounds. So that's pretty, I mean, it feels fairly heavy, but it's not too bad, 5.4 pounds. So when you add it to say the Lenovo, it's the same weight as this Sager. <laughs> you go figure. It's amazing, isn't it? And of course, uh, 
This, I, I understand, according to the box there, it's also got an overclock mode as well. So I think that looks pretty sweet. So let's put it to the test. So setup is very straightforward. First off, power on your laptop, or in this case, the, the tablet, and uh, do the same with the, uh, the gaming box. Plug it in, connect the monitor. In this case, I've got the display port, and then uh, connect the, uh, the Thunderbolt 3 cable to your, to your Thunderbolt 3 port on your, your laptop. Um, then it'll, uh, you'll need to install the, the drivers um, for uh, it'll automatically install the drivers and uh, then install the, the graphics drivers. Then there's a utility um, from uh, Gigabyte which um, allows you to uh, even overclock the, uh, the GPU or the, the, the core clock or the memory and it, uh, you can set the fan speed to auto, manual or customize it and create a profile. Uh, various uh, power targets here and it tells you what the temperature is as well. So it's pretty, it's pretty sweet. And then of course you've got uh, uh, various graphs too, which will do all the monitoring for you. The box has some very nice RGB lighting that changes colors. However, I couldn't seem to change it using the software provided. It's likely the CPU in this uh, small Asus tablet will hold us back. But let's face it, I wouldn't be able to play this at all with the Intel 520 graphics. <laughs> not like this, anyhow. Not at all the settings at this resolution. So here are the results from Battlefield 1. The baseline performance not using the gaming box is great and you can see that we take about a 40% performance hit just connecting the same laptop to the box. Battlefield 1 loves a fast CPU. So as expected, the overclocked Sage does outperform the Yoga 720, but to be fair, not by much at the QHD resolution. The dual core i5-6200U in the ASUS Transformer book didn't fare quite so well, being about 60% behind the baseline performance. Still, if you have a 4K monitor, this should be closer. And bear in mind, without the box, you would get nowhere near this type of performance. So Doom on uh, max settings, 2560 by 1440 on the ASUS tablet. 80 odd, 80 odd FPS. In Doom, we don't see much of a performance hit. Certainly at QHD, 22% with the Sage, 25% with the Yoga 720, and 35% with the ASUS Transformer Book. Again, if you were playing at 4K, then the CPU takes more of a backseat. It's good to see here that even though the Yoga 720 only has two PCI Express lanes, that it isn't held back and matches the overclocked Sager. Rainbow Six Siege at max settings. This eliminates any CPU bottleneck, especially at QHD resolution. So Rainbow Six Siege, at 2560 by 1440 on the ASUS tablet. Uh, max settings. Look at this, all three notebooks match each other. This is a perfect example of what can be achieved with the box. Enabling low power devices to game, you know, such as this ASUS Transformer book and a game as well as the, uh, the desktop. This shows that the true loss of performance between uh, the box and uh, the notebook is more like 14%. Finally, Rise of the Tomb Raider, again, max settings. Here's gameplay footage on the ASUS tablet. We see the little ASUS match the overclock Sage at QHD. The Yoga 720 performed really well, again showing that two PCI Express lanes is not a limiting factor. Still, we see about a 30% loss using the box at QHD, so perhaps the GTX 1070 box may be more useful at QHD resolution. Now, I did try and connect my 4K TV through it using the ASUS tablet and the Yoga 720, and it had all kinds of issues. The Yoga would just hang, and the ASUS would run in, uh, into driver crashes, so I had no idea what was going on. I even disabled the Intel GPU on the ASUS. I averaged out all the results, and at QHD, we typically saw about a 30% reduction in performance. At 1080p, this was higher as the CPU power decreased, it was good to see that the i7-7700HQ CPU saw no discernible difference versus the overclocked i7-7700K, nor was the performance impacted by only having the two PCI Express lanes. So, to sum up, I think the gaming box certainly allows you to play current games at max settings on systems that you couldn't currently handle, such as this. If your notebook only has two PCI Express lanes, that, that won't be an issue either. Setup was a breeze and overclocking was easy. 
I was able to get an extra 154 megahertz on the core and 374 on the memory. Now that being said, I saw no improvement when I attached it to my Sage. It is also quite an affordable solution. That's $700, including the Juge 1080, which to be fair sells by uh, $550 by itself, is much better value than the Razer Core. But on average, a deficit of 27 to 36% compared to a G desktop GTX 1080, I do wonder if the GTX 1070 box is better value at $560. Another thing to consider is that this is a custom GTX 1080 card, and it's not likely you will find a future more powerful card to, to fit in it. I give the box a score of 80% and want to thank you for watching it. If you haven't done so, please uh, subscribe and uh, so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Uh, thumbs up and I'll see you next time. Bye now.